Hey guys, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Today we're going to have a really quick lesson building on our Unity series on how to create a simple pickup for your corridor. Uh, so let's get started. So if we want to have a little look, this is kind of where we left off our game last time, right? Looking good. We can move around. Everything is looking well in our game. Uh, so one thing I actually want to mention that uh, a few of you have been asking me about this in class is uh, I've been hearing the, the complaint that it takes a long time to bake in those lightings. And that's correct. So let's do a little tip here on how to kind of speed that up. So I'm going to go to my lighting tab. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck auto generate. Okay. Now what that does mean is every time you want to play test your game and see how everything's looking, you do have to switch from scene view to lighting view and then click the generate lighting button. Okay, but what this will allow you to do is place in lots of corridors, lots of lights, and you're, every time you add something new, it's not going to generate and take five, ten minutes of your time. So that's the first step. The next step is uh, under the light mapping settings, if we actually lower some of these, some of yours are set to 1024 um, under the light map size, you can put it down to 64, even 32. And uh, especially for testing purposes, you're really not going to notice any difference in your game for what you're doing. So I recommend lowering that down. And then I kind of put my light map padding and size down to around two texels per unit. And that will speed things up, taking it from, you know, five to ten minutes to render lighting to maybe 30 seconds. Um, so hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit. So, for example, here, if you see if I click generate lighting, it's baking down there at the bottom. And it is pretty much done. Right, so a fraction of the time it once was taking when those settings were much higher. So that's just in the lighting tab. I unchecked auto generate and I changed the settings right in here. Feel free to copy mine if you wish. Okay, back to our game. So I want to make a very simple pickup, a uh, simple pickup script, and you can use that to grab objects throughout your level. Now we're not going to go into how to count things up or count down or run timers. That's something you're welcome to do. Uh, do a bit of research on your own for. All we're really going to focus on for now is how to pick up an object and then have it get removed from the game world. Okay, so let's create an object we're going to pick up. So I'm going to go over to hierarchy here. I'm just going to right click 3D object and I'm going to put in a cube. All right, let's reset its position back to zero and let's kind of, uh, you know, shuffle it on down the corridor there. Okay, there's my cube. It's pretty great. It's a cube. Uh, let's move it down, just have it not quite fall between the world. Actually, it'll be raised up. Anyways, there's my cube. It's black. We'll worry about the lighting after. Okay. Um, there'll already be a box collider on it. I want it so when I run into that cube, it goes away. Now, I recommend you build something nicer than a cube, some kind of object inside a blender, bring that in, have that be your pickup. I'll let you worry about that. But we're just going to pick up my cube here. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder. If you don't have a scripts folder, make just right click, create scripts. And inside the scripts folder, let's create a new C sharp script. Uh, you can call it pickup, you know, I'll call mine coin. So maybe in the future I'm planning on putting coins in the game. So I'm just gonna call my script coin. Okay. I'm then gonna double click to open it up. And mine's gonna open up in Visual Studio. Yours might open up in MonoDevelop, uh, but you can open it up in whatever compiling software that you like. And I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Okay, I really don't need any of that. So I'm just going to get rid of it. And all I have now is an open and close squiggly bracket. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a private uh, void. Okay. And we're going to call it on trigger. Oh, there it is on trigger enter. And I'm going to hit tab to autocomplete it. And you'll notice it's going to put on trigger enter the collider with an other. Okay. We're going to define that in a little bit. Um, so we're saying here we're going to create a, a, a private void that when uh, something enters the trigger of whatever the script is attached to, it's going to initiate a collider here. Okay, and it automatically put in another set of squiggly brackets here. You might have to put your own here. Let's zoom in there so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, you might have to input these as well. Nice thing about Visual Studio, it really autofills a lot of this for you, which is really fantastic. Um, okay, so let's add in what the trigger means. So now we're going to do an if statement. Okay, and we'll say other uh, dot tag. We've talked about tags in the past when we did 2D games, but I'll refresh your memory what that is. So if the other, remember we talked about the other up here, if the other's tag is equal to, two equal signs means equals, not one. Um, and then we're doing quotation marks indicating we're looking for a very specific uh, 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 word. Uh, we're gonna call it if the other tag is equal to player, okay? 
Let's pop that down. Let's do some squiggly brackets here. Separate those. So if the other, we talked about the other up here, if the other's tag is equal to player, what do we want to happen? Well, we want to destroy. Oops. This game object. Let's end that. Okay. So all that's really happening is when something enters the collider of whatever this script is attached to, and if that other is tagged player, it's going to destroy the game object. That is really simple. We can take the script, we can morph it. So if you hit a certain thing, it destroys you, and you can just play around with these variables here. Okay. So I'm going to go to file and then uh, save, or it's Control S. And let's go back into Unity now. It's going to compile the script. You'll see it over there. Really simple script. And now let's take this script and we can just drag it onto our cube. Make sure it's over there. There's our coin script. Um, and we can do a quick little test. It's not going to work and I'll explain why. Maybe you can kind of figure it out. Running over here. So you notice, oh, there's the cube. You couldn't really see it because it's against the black background because it's not lit. But there's the cube there. But if I run into it, I'm actually bumping into the cube and it's not picking it up. Okay, and there's two reasons behind that. Um, the first of which is um, we haven't set that it's a trigger. So remember if we talked about the script here, we're saying on trigger enter in the script, right? So we need to set the box collider to is trigger. Okay, that's the first step. So once again, if we go to play that, it's not going to work. You probably guessed that so much. Man, the cube looks invisible. There it is, right? But I can pass through it now. And, uh, oh, it actually got rid of it, and that's because I was testing before. The reason I got rid of it is because this is what it should have done. Let's test that again now and pretend that last bit never happened. I don't feel like recording it again. All right, so there's my object. I can pass through it, but it is remaining there. That's what should have happened, and that's what will happen on your screen. So we've set it to trigger, which means we can pass through it. But the last thing the script is looking for is if the other that passes through the collider is tagged player. So if... The other is tagged player, do this, destroy this game object, okay? So let's go to our first person controller up here, go to the tag function, and we're gonna tag it as player, okay? And this is gonna work as you saw a second ago, but let's just go for it and test it again. Where's my cube? There it is. And then boom, cube's gone, okay? Excellent. So how do we light the cube? Well, you could put a, a, a light directly on it, or you can just mark it as static. Go back to lighting, generate lighting. Generate that lighting nice and quick. And then there's my ugly cube. You'd want to apply some textures onto it or make it look like coin since I did call it coin script. All right, but there's my cube now. Looks good. Boom. Cube's gone. All right, and then you can hide a couple on the screen. So you can take this cube here uh, and then you could duplicate it. And I'll hide one down there. And then you could uh, duplicate that one. Right, and put it a little bit further down here. And then you could duplicate it one more time and then kind of put it down here, down the ramp. All right, and then we have to go back to lighting, generate lighting. It's gonna bake the lighting in. Back to scene. And now we should, let's see if it works. Collected one, collected the other, they are disappearing. Looks good, collect that one. Yeah, I, oh, missed it, boink. And then the last one down here, down the ramp. Excellent. Okay, our game's starting to shift together. So I hope that was helpful. Feel free to come to me if you have any questions. We will see you all later.